This unassuming tower, tucked away in a corner of Athens, is one of the best preserved buildings from antiquity. Its survival, almost untouched, is a miracle, and one due to the fact that for centuries it was believed to be the tomb of the philosophers, Socrates and Plato. But this isn't a tomb. Carved on its eight faces are a clue to its real use. On each side, a worn sculpture of each of the eight winds can still be seen, along with a sundial. It was actually built by an astronomer around 200 years after the death of Tisibius, but is a monument to his genius. This building, now known as the Tower of the Winds, was the public clock of ancient Athens. Inside this tower, there once stood a huge and complex water clock, based on a Tisibius design. This clock was fed by a constant stream of water, which ran from a spring on the Acropolis, from which the whole population of Athens could tell the time. But this was more than just a clock or even a calendar. Some believe this strange building housed a device that even charted the movements of the sun and moon in relation to the constellations of the zodiac. We know the Greeks were measuring hours, days, and months during the time of Tisibius. Could it be that they had also started to look above and measure the heavens? One man believed the answer may lie in the cogs and wheels of the Antikythera mechanism. In 1951, an English physicist, Derek de Sola Price, decided to find out for himself and examine the mechanism in detail for the first time. De Sola Price traveled to Athens to look at the mechanism. The pieces had lain largely untouched since its discovery 50 years earlier. The device had disintegrated further, exposing pieces of the gears which he was able to study. He became determined to crack the secrets of the Antikythera mechanism. De Sola Price spent much of his time at the National Museum of Greece in Athens. Remnants of a wooden box which held the device also had Greek writing, which gave further tantalizing hints. Using this information, De Sola Price developed a theory and put together a model of how he believed the Antikythera mechanism could have worked. He realized the mechanism was an extremely sophisticated device for calculating the relative movements of the sun and moon. It also seemed to show the days of the month as lunar phases. Sola Price had established its mechanical complexity and knew that the knowledge required to create such a machine was immense. He believed that at the front of the mechanism, a bronze dial showed the date and positions of the sun and moon. A dial at the back would indicate the month, possibly within a 12-month year. Another dial at the back seemed to show either a cycle of 47 months or four years. De Sola Price called the mechanism a calendar computer. For anyone in the ancient world, such a device would have been invaluable. To understand the movement of the sun and moon within the heavens was to look into the minds of the gods. Many believed then, as some do today, that the positions of the sun, moon, and stars at the time of someone's birth may influence their later life. 
What complex horoscope software does today, the Antikythera mechanism may have done over two millennia earlier. The theory was right. The Antikythera mechanism was an automated calculating device, perhaps even a type of computer. You could call this thing a, a computer in the sense that you uh, put in some data and it gives you out related data. An ancient computer is a difficult concept to imagine. Yet in many ways that is exactly what the Antikythera mechanism is. It is astounding to compare it with the machine designed by Charles Babbage in the 1830s, which is often cited as the world's first computer and the machine which led to our modern high-tech age. This was the first modern device which could make automatic calculations. The technology is startlingly similar to the Antikythera mechanism, yet there is 2,000 years difference between the two. Wright believes that the Antikythera mechanism was more complex than de Sola Price imagined, and most importantly, also showed the changing positions of the planets, as well as the sun and moon, over time. In Wright's model of the mechanism, a knob is turned to set the days and months. Intricate gearing then moves a series of indicators which represent the sun, moon, and planets. The knob could be turned every day so the position of the planets could be monitored throughout the year, or it could be set to a specific date to show their positions at that time. It is, in effect, a mechanical model of the Greek universe. Today, astrologers need a complex computer program to carry out exactly the function of the Antikythera mechanism. So could this machine have been created by Archimedes himself? We know from ancient texts that he built planetaria, but could he have designed this one? It's difficult to make a direct connection between the Antikythera mechanism and Archimedes. What we can say with certainty was the revolution that Archimedes pioneered in mathematics and geometry was necessary for those who then invented the Antikythera mechanism. Without Archimedes and his advances, it's difficult to think that the Antikythera mechanism could have been invented at all. But even that legacy was not to last. The library itself fell victim to war and destruction, being burned to the ground several times over the following 800 years. Eventually, most of the collection, including much of Archimedes' work, was lost or destroyed in the fires. If only the library had survived, we may have inherited the insights of such great thinkers. Without them, we have been forced to reinvent much that we are only now realizing was already known over 2,000 years ago. If we had not lost this ancient wisdom, how much more advanced might science and technology be today? And what else may still lie hidden or lost from that time? Without that sudden storm all those centuries ago, that ancient ship might not have foundered, taking her cargo of statues, pottery, and that incredible machine to the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. If a group of sponge divers had not stumbled upon the wreck 2,000 years later, the Antikythera mechanism might be lying there today, slowly corroding. And what other technological marvels from that time might still be awaiting discovery? <laughs>